Welcome to Quirk Place. This is a place where we talk about workplace issues on a weekly basis. And I am happy to welcome Sylvia Stultz with us today. And uh, she has learned, what she's learned from her career is, uh, her career as an accountant is that numbers matter, but the people making the decisions behind those numbers are even more important. She continues to master her profession and is always seeking opportunities in continuous learning, which allows her to develop expert opinions and skills. The bottom line is that people are the power behind business, and she believes in the power of an exceptional talent acquisition consultant to deliver those people to an organization. Why her? Because she listens carefully. She brings passion and enthusiasm to her craft and is seeking to place the whole person to the best role company role or the company and she's not matching a job posting to a resume she only places a candidate or hiring manager in a position she genuinely feels they'll be successful in she currently provides full cycle recruitment services for a fortune 500 company that specializes in risk management reinsurance and human resources welcome sylvia thank you Happy okay to be here. i'm so glad you can be here i'm just going to turn on my chat window um i do see uh rad in the room so if you have any questions yeah you can just you're free to type them at the oh <laughs> rad is saying he's eight that senior he's only 42. <laughs> okay good to know <laughs> Alrighty. So um, I met Sylvia a number of years ago. Uh, we worked together uh, in a great company. We had lots of fun. And uh, at that time I met her, she was an accountant. So uh, LinkedIn is a great resource, great tool, um, because you bump into people again and it's like, oh, they're doing that now? Wow. <laughs> so it's like she's made this transition and she's a talent acquisition consultant. So based on what I was doing, I was thinking, oh, okay. Uh, I definitely would like to talk to her and I'm sure people who are watching this show, whether it's now or later, would um, be interested in what she's doing. So what would le led to the shift uh, in becoming an accountant to working for human resources? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So, you know, one of the things that I always found in accounting was it really gave me the foundational understanding of business. I think a lot of us go to school with the hopes of like, especially, you know, when I went to school, 20 years ago, um, <laughs> you, <laughs> the same profession for a majority of your life. It was this, you know, weird idea that you would be in this profession for the sure. majority of your life. And I think, um, you know, I got into it. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. it. It taught me a lot about business to the bottom line. So net income, uh, net loss. But um after having my first son, I really was open, and I think this is the most important thing to learn about your career journey is is to be open uh, to sure. change. And so one of the, the things that I decided to do was go into uh, a recruitment consultant position. Uh, it was an easy transition because I was recruiting um, finance and accounting professionals. And then uh, from there, I spent a good number of years doing that about nine uh eight or nine and from there i you know moved on to my next career which was going from a, an external recruitment uh resource like a headhunter to a internal resource which is the talent acquisition individual and uh i would say you know my recruitment consultant life led me to how do we build businesses to the top line? Their sales, their branding, you know, everything that's really important when you're trying to deliver on sales. And I had to deliver on sales through acquiring talent for other organizations. Um, but now I'm, I work for one organization and I'm acquiring talent for, for them, but also looking at the business strategy and other things that are really important to, um, you know, bringing talent in that makes sense for our company today, but also okay. for tomorrow. Okay, and so you, you've answered my next question, which is the difference between uh, a headhunter and a, a talent acquisition yeah. consultant. Yeah, I would say the biggest difference, just so that your audience knows, is when, when headhunters are out there um, trying to source for talent, they have multiple clients and they have multiple pressing needs. So the, the 
one-on-one -on -one attention can be a little bit more mm -hmm. challenging, but when you're working with a talent acquisition person, you may be speaking with them for a lifelong, um, you know, tr they may be in your industry and you're building typically long-standing relationships, although you can do that as a head of right. as well. So it, uh, it just depends if you're in a multifaceted uh, agency where you have lots of positions or if you're in a very specialized agency where maybe you were doing what I was doing, which was finance and financial services type position. Okay. All right. So in your current position, uh, what is your area of expertise? Yeah. So right now um, I work for Aon. And as you had mentioned, it's a very large company, uh, approximately 80,000 people worldwide lots of offices as well and, and lots of countries so we are basically spread across the world we're the largest or one of the largest uh insurance brokerages definitely the largest reinsurance broker brokerages plus we also have the human capital people know them um as aon yeah. hewitt so um with these three different facets really we have two main lines and that's uh risk and people, um, risk with people, risk with companies and corporations. Uh, a large part of our, our business though is uh, commercial reinsurance. So I recruit in the risk space. So a lot of commercial uh, insurance folks that could range from administrative uh, level positions right up to the most senior account executives and executive leadership uh, for for the brokerage space. So that's my specialty. Specialization. Okay, so what's a uh, other than today? <laughs> what does your average day look like? <laughs> oh, geez. Um, well, you know, <laughs> I'm always talking, so I brought my water um, because I do a lot of conversation, uh, getting out there and meeting people. Um, you know, networking events, and and you know, definitely encourage people to go out to networking events and, and be present in your marketplace. Um, lots of calls where it may involve sourcing. So, you know, reaching out to our candidate pool or our candidate market and finding out, you know, what are they doing? What's the heartbeat of, of what's happening in our industry at this time? And, uh, and what are their interests? And of course, then, you know, being internal and working with our managers and, and finding out what's the, the next step. Are we growing in certain areas? Are we developing new areas? Uh, where are they hiring? How are people internally shifting? So there's a lot that is done in the day of a recruiter. Um, we apologize all the time because we're always running short of time. So when you reach out to us, um, just know that you know we have very uh, busy workbenches just because of the fact that we are touching base with so many people in any given day. Mm -hmm. So. It's a very, very busy job, but very rewarding because it involves people and making big, big decisions. You know, changing a job is a big decision. Sure, sure, absolutely. And uh, I mean, it's good information for people to know that um, uh, human resources doesn't stay stuck behind a desk, that they are out and about in public. They're not hiding <laughs> like, every, like everybody might think because it's important for them yep. to keep on top of trends and ideas that are in the marketplace yeah. and so they need to get yeah. out from behind their desk and go out to i guess conferences yeah conferences social, social events. events you know there's sure lots of events and i would say like if you really get to know your industry um you know go on google you can do searches for networking events and insurance sure. and you're gonna find you know uh, loads of of events that you can attend where you could meet someone like myself who's recruiting on behalf of their organization. Sure, and a networking event is a much better place to meet a recruiter than meeting them on paper. <laughs> 100 right? Because that's where your, your paper comes sure, to life. Me. You know, who you are um, comes to life and, and nothing's greater than shaking someone's hand versus just, you know, um, even if it's just a two minute conversation, you can really make a big impact um, always have your elevator pitch <laughs> ready, though. Sure. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good to know. It's not just for entrepreneurs. It's for, you know, nope. everybody, you know. So when you meet somebody, that first Never. 30 seconds of that conversation, how do you introduce yourself? How are you presenting yourself? Are you clear? Do you know what you want? 
And, um, you know, it, it's important to, to have that in mind when you're going out there. Okay. <laughs> now, I found uh, something very interesting on your LinkedIn profile. And uh, it it's, a, it's a motto or a mantra. I'm not sure what you'd call it. And what it says is, in addition to being a talent acquisition consultant, it says, you lead with integrity, you learn through curiosity, you share with generosity, generosity, and it's important to be kind. And when we think of recruitment services, that's not necessarily the first thing that jumps into our mind. So I'm curious, um, in terms of your personal journey, uh, what has led you to to a place where this is um, this is this is how you present yourself? Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, the person that I need to be in every day of my life, whether it's at work or with my friends or um, with my family, it has to always remain authentic. And so when I think of, you know, I'm on um, LinkedIn and I'm reaching out to someone and I just want to capture their attention for a quick minute. And I just want to take the opportunity to understand who they mm. are. That's what I wanted to put out to the world mm. and say, you know, if you got to know me in 45 seconds or less by looking at my profile, what would you get to know? And it would be that that's the way I choose to lead my life. Um, but I would say that, you know, leading with integrity is not something that I just leave at work. It's something that I lead through my personal life and, and through my family and, and friends uh, and my interactions. Um, I think it's really important to be curious too as, as a leader um, sure. when you're exploring new ideas and people. Um, I always, you know, say this to my kids even, like ask why and ask why more than once. Yeah. So, you know, the sky's blue. Why? <laughs> well, it's <laughs> <laughs> sure. Why? Their teachers you know, will love you. It's important. Their teachers will love you for that. <laughs> oh, I know. I know because uh, I've already had that on a report card. You know, <laughs> your kids are curious. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Their mother is too. <laughs> but I think it's important uh, to be curious. And, and, and that really leads to engagement. I think you hear a lot about engagement. Uh, in HR when you're naturally curious about people and why they do things and how they do things and what led them to that decision. Um, I believe you bring uh, the most out of people. You you get them entirely submersed in, hey, this person wants to get to know me. So that's important as well. Um, of course, generosity has always been important to me. I've had extremely generous leaders, you know, where you and I met. You know, one of our yeah. best experiences, Steve Spooner. I mean, <laughs> we'll talk about leadership. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. he was amazing, um, generous, mm -hmm. kind, open, fun. All those things, um, uh, you know, sure. stem to sharing and sharing of information and sharing your knowledge. And, and of course, you know, ultimately being kind, treating people with respect, integrity, you know, all the, all this blends together right so um so that's sort of my statement so that people when they approach me they know who i am from a very okay very high okay. level that's, that's good and it, it, it definitely differentiates you um because it, it was something that that stood out at, at me and i mean i do um yeah well we're, we're acquainted <laughs> now i guess um but it, it, it certainly made you stand out so uh I think that's that's great. So on another, um, I guess, organization that you're connected with is called realhumanbeing.org. And so can you um, can you tell us, I guess, um, how that connects, what they're about and how that connects with what you're doing? Really, um, it started off by me meeting David Howlett. David Howlett is uh, here mm -hmm. in Oakville. He did a presentation for one of my organizations uh, that I was at at the time. And it was really to try to get our organization to the next level through the power of our own people. And uh, it just something he said just really resonated with me. It, it, it felt like he was reading my mind about how I operate. And the bottom line is, is that, you know, to 
to live the real hu human being uh, philosophies, ultimately you hope that one day someone says something like, you're an amazing woman or um, you're the good guy. So, you know, when you think about um, your car breaks down and <laughs> you call a friend and you're like, hey, um, my car is broken down and do you know anyone? And they're like, yeah, I know this really good guy. He's at <laughs> Young's Automotive. Uh, Spears and Doorbell, and you're just give them a call. Sure. I know you'll be satisfied. I think that's what you want as a real human being when you're when you're part of this organization. You want to use those interactions, that network that you gain from connecting with with folks like Dave um, Hallett and, and his team of people and people that he's connected with that are all part of it. Um, but there's some key philosophies, and I know you pointed them out, Kelly, sure. when we were talking about assuming everyone's intelligent. And, you know, that's a really important statement because when you approach people, assume that they understand what you're talking about and that you're both going to sure. mutually help each other. Um, so that assumption is very important and it's a natural uh, way that we learn to respect each other and our differences and know that we bring different things to the table. So um, that's that's a really good point that you brought out, and um, also having passion for what you do. I don't know if you can notice it in this call today, <laughs> but I love my job, and I think it shows. And people resonate with people that love what they do and and want to work with people Absolutely. that love what they do. And <laughs> yeah, you know, like when you're in a talent acquisition role, do you want to see someone that's like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great place to work, and mm, yeah, no, you want you want zest, you want life, <laughs> um, and so I think uh, again, you know, that bring that passion to your life is another part of the philosophy behind it. Um, best one, one though is uh, trying to get over yourself. I think that's uh, probably the biggest lesson I've learned. You know, we can all carry our baggage or or our um, accolades. You know, that we're an MBA or that I want. You know, I've won two international mm -hmm. sales awards. Or you could talk about all the I struggles you went through. But that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's not what defines you. You know. What really defines you is how you action and how you carry yourself today, and and what you've taken yes. from those lessons um, to to be the person you are today. So you know, just because you had a hard life doesn't mean that you're going to be a hard person. And I think so. Getting over yourself, knowing that what you've achieved or not achieved or had to overcome, and just um, sitting in the now and and treating each person with with respect. And um, mutually sure. helping people, being kind sure. and, and helping. People. While while you're 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 while what you've gone through in the past is certainly real, there's not an advantage to hanging on to that like luggage and walking around with it because it holds you back. And so you know you need to, you know, just kind of recognize the situation as it is and just continue to put your best foot forward. Yeah, absolutely. And learning lessons happen every day. So, you know, why does your learning have to stop in, in college or university? You know, you're, you're continuously Well, certainly learning. in today's marketplace, um, continuously learning is the, is the only way to go. That is the only way to stay in the game, as, uh, as, as they say. Okay. <laughs>